Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas' Wednesday evening service. I'm Reverend Laura Hallett. It's my pleasure and my honor to be the spiritual leader here at this beautiful community in Southern Nevada. Each Wednesday night, we take a look at some of the topics that we've been working with throughout the month and find some practices to um, help have a greater experience of the principles that we are discussing. So for the month of May, in our theme of 2023, Building a Community, we are looking at the idea of peace. And so peace as a concept and then how we can practice peace in our lives. And so as I was looking for practices and thinking about this, what came to my mind was, you know, the peace that, that can be achieved through the practice of mindfulness. And so I thought this would be a good time to spend the next five weeks looking at different aspects of mindfulness, how we can have a greater experience in our lives with mindfulness, with the practice, and how we can use it to help develop a more peaceful existence for each one of us and for our world. So we're going to take a look at mindfulness um, in five different ways. Today we're just today is just an introduction to mindfulness. Uh, we're going to look at it as um, a way of working through pain and stress, working with um, relationships with other people, relationships with ourselves, how we can develop a greater sense of compassion for ourselves through the practice of mindfulness, and um, see how we can actually use it to bring about a change, a transformation in our lives. So I've been teaching meditation and practicing, teaching and practicing meditation for more than 15 years now. And it doesn't matter which class it is I teach. Whenever I start to talk about meditation, someone in the class is going to say that they can't meditate because they can't quiet their minds. It is the number one reason people think that they cannot meditate in any way possible. And because mindfulness is a type of meditation, then they often think that they can't get to a state of mindfulness either because they, their minds just won't be quiet. Well, here's the thing, folks. Our minds are made to think. That's, that's the inherent structure in them, is they are made to process information. They are, they are designed to help us recall information, to bring about, um, bring up things in the past so that uh, we can use them in the present moment. Our minds are designed for our survival and our basic survival especially you know well even now but especially back in the more prehistoric days it was all about we got to think we got to be knowing what's going on and we've got to be able to analyze it quickly we got to be able to solve that problem and get out of the danger that is uh, heading our way so so they are basically a thinking machine and that's okay The thing that we need to begin to work with is the thoughts themselves. Because it's not the thinking that's the problem. It's the attachment we have to the thoughts. It's the emotions that are evoked within us when the thought comes up. It's the charge that the thought has. It's the rabbit hole the thought can take us down into so that we can't even get to a place of any kind of peace in our mind because we've got these thoughts going rampant. Our minds are made to think. And just because you decide you're gonna still your body and observe your breath and sit in the lotus position and ohm out, doesn't mean your thinking mind is going to cooperate. It doesn't just quiet down because you've decided to meditate. Quite the contrary. These thoughts are running through our minds almost constantly. And meditation and mindfulness is not about having prolonged periods with no thoughts running through your mind. It's about increasing our awareness of the thoughts and for those very, very brief pauses in between the thoughts. Many of the people that I have studied over the last 
15 plus years say that you're really getting accomplished at meditation if you can manage to have five to 10 seconds between those thoughts. Between your recognition of a thought as it moves in and out of your consciousness. And our goal is always to expand that gap, that distance between the thoughts. And the more we expand it, the more successful our meditation is, the better we will have a sense of peace. And it is expanded because by being mindful of our thoughts. It's expanded when we recognize the thought that's happening and let it move on out of our conscious awareness without judging it. It's about learning to look at our thinking in a non-judgmental way without any emotional charge attached to it it's realizing that a thought is just a thought. And with that realization, we begin to develop a sense of equanimity. Equanimity is peace and balance, a non-reactive state. It allows us to see that the thought is just a thought and doesn't require any action on our part at this very moment. As our minds begin to develop this and become more stable, and they get less caught up in the content of our thinking, we are actually strengthening our mind's ability to concentrate and our own ability to be calm in any moment. Each time we let go of our thoughts and go back to our breathing, back to our sense of equanimity, we are strengthening our mindfulness muscle. We are developing that um, ability to recognize the thoughts, let them move on by, and again, increase the gap between the thoughts. And in this process, we are actually becoming more accepting of ourselves, more accepting of what's going on within us, more accepting of what that chatter that's going on in our mind is, is all about. We become more balanced, more at peace throughout that. Letting go of our thoughts doesn't mean we're going to suppress them and push them away. That doesn't work. In fact, the thoughts usually get louder and louder as we do that. But acknowledging them and just letting them be without any judgment allows us to let them drift on by. I once had a meditation teacher describe it as clouds. You know, if you're laying on the grass, looking up at the clouds on a beautiful summer day, and you see the clouds moving by, and you notice that one of them maybe looks like a flower and another one might look like a bunny rabbit, and you watch it and it just, you say, oh, look, that one looks like a rabbit and you let it drift on by. You have no emotional charge to it looking like a rabbit. That's just what it is. And we allow it to drift on by out of our consciousness. Um, another meditation teacher equated it to birds. You see a bird flying by. Oh, there's a bird. Oh, there's a bird. No charge to it, just acknowledging it and letting it move on out of our view. This is what we are looking for when we are practicing mindfulness. The ability to be with the thought, but not be consumed by the thought. So one of the great meditation uh, mindfulness practitioners and uh, researchers is uh, a doctor out of Massachusetts named John Kabat-Zinn. He has several books on it. He's developed a program called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction which is taught in many hospitals around the world nowadays. And um, no, not just hospitals, but all over the place. It is a great way of developing a practice of mindfulness for yourself. He gives mindfulness this definition. Mindfulness is the awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally, in service of self-understanding and wisdom. Now that's a mouthful, so let's break it down. Mindfulness is about awareness, about paying attention. But it's not just paying attention, it's actually purposefully paying attention to what's happening and staying in the present moment. That's what the thoughts want to do. They want to take us out of the present moment. Generally, it's a worry about the future or it's some kind of anger or fear or resentment from the past. But if we can... Stay in the present moment and not judge the thought that has come up for us. 
then we begin to develop a greater sense of self-understanding and a bit of wisdom about how our minds are actually working. So there are three key components to mindfulness. The first one is the attention. That is the ability to focus on what you want when you want to. So in mindfulness, we are focusing on, our, on the thoughts as they come up and allowing them to just be a thought and let it be. The second component is awareness. So awareness, like attention, is looking at the recognition of the thoughts, the emotions, the senses, the external behaviors, because sometimes not only do our thoughts distract us, our bodies will distract us too. Um, you may have a, some kind of a smell come in through our senses. You may have a leg that starts to twitch or your hand or um, develop a, an itch on the middle of your back that you just can't quite reach. And no matter how much you move in the chair, it's still there because that's what our bodies do. They are trying to distract us, get us back to... Um, other things other than actually being at peace with things. And then the third component is that what I talked about earlier, equanimity. Equanimity is non-reactivity. It's the ability to let those experiences come and go, let the thoughts come and go, not judge them, and not allow them to create any kind of tension or charge within us to where we feel like we have to do something. So it's staying in peace and balance in the moment. And so those are the basic components of mindfulness. Now mindfulness can be practiced in lots of different ways, but one of the easiest ways, and one of the things that you always have with you and have available to you, is by using our breath. Our breath is a way that we can um, keep ourselves more centered in our bodies as we're concentrating on our breath. And it's a place to, to reground us. And so we start off by getting ourselves in a calm position. You know, generally we begin to relax our bodies. Um, I find that it is helpful for me, most helpful, if I'm sitting up straight in a chair. Um, I have a tendency to fall asleep if I lay down to meditate. But, you know, that can be a good meditation too or a really good nap either way. But finding a way that you become comfortable in wherever you're sitting you know, um, it doesn't have to be on the floor in the lotus position. I couldn't do that if I wanted to. Uh, I find a nice firm chair, usually my office chair. Um, good support. I like my arm rest, um, you know, so that I can rest my arms on them and not have to have support those in any other way. Um, I like to be able to put my feet on the floor so that I feel like I'm grounded, connected. Um, and again, I'm it's a straight chair, so I've got a nice flow. I'm not slouching over to where that kind of like, you know, can hinder the breathing. I'm sitting up straight. I'm not stiff, but I am straight. So it's like I don't have my head, you know, like a, like I'm standing at attention, but I do have my head up, you know, so that there is some ease of flow of breath moving through my body when I'm doing this. And so just beginning to do that. And then what we do with the breath is we begin to put our awareness on it. And there are lots of different ways, lots of different breathing techniques that we can do to um, do that. Um, I find the easiest one is just being aware of the breath coming in through my nostrils and moving out, coming in and moving out. Now, they often say that we should breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth. I haven't found that to be any more helpful than than anything else but if it works for you you can do that um, my breath is not usually audible you I'm usually just a normal breath I don't try to change it um, sometimes um, naturally I will as I'm meditating will just take a deeper breath sometimes it just my body just feels like it needs a deeper breath and that's fine too I let my breathing be what it is again non-judgmentally I'm not worried about about whether I'm doing it right or not. Because, you know, we've been breathing all of our lives. You know, first thing we do, last thing we do is to take a breath. So I think we can all handle that without changing it, without judging it, without worrying if I'm doing it right. Just allow it to be. And I keep my awareness on that breathing in and breathing out. Now what that does is my awareness is on my breath. So it's not as um, focused on the thoughts. And then what happens is a thought will come through. 
you know, and our thoughts can be about anything. It can be about an encounter we just had with somebody. Um, maybe somebody cut us off on the road as we were driving. Um, it could be an argument you had with a family member. Um, it could be your shopping list that you forgot to put something on and all of a sudden it reminds you, oh, I got to put butter on my list for the grocery store. Um, it could be, uh, you know, oh no, did I shut the garage door before I left? That's always my thing to remember whether I shut the garage or not. Um, you know, these thoughts come in and the, our tendency is to then follow the thought, but we don't want to follow the thought. We want to watch the thought dissipate. We don't want to follow that thought down. Oh my God, I didn't shut my garage door. Oh no, I wonder if somebody's going to get it. Will the neighbors see it? What am I going to do? Should I go back home and check on my garage door? Oh my goodness. Did I lock the inside door to the house? Oh no, I don't know if I left my entire house open. What is, you know, what am I going to come back to? You see how that thought just went all the way down a rabbit hole? <laughs> That's what our minds will do. You know, um, that, that laundry list of things, to-do list that we have to, uh, Complete. That's a good one to take us down because one thing often leads to another one. And so, again, it's not about trying to suppress the thoughts. It's acknowledging it. Oh, okay. I thought about the garage. Let's go back to my breath. Oh, I thought about the laundry list. Let's go back to my breath. Don't forget to get butter. Go back to my breath. Each time bringing me back to my breath. And what we'll find is that the thoughts will start to slow down. They're never going to disappear. You will always have them. But you can still get to a place of peace by not reacting to the thoughts. Thinking is not the bad thing here. It is not even undesirable when we're trying to meditate. What matters is how aware we are of our thoughts and feelings as we're sitting in this contemplation. And what kind of relationship do we have with them? Are they going to take us over and become the dominant thing in our consciousness? Or are we just going to acknowledge them and let them float on by? When we try to suppress them, we build more tension and frustration. We do not get to a place of calmness or clarity or peace. Our goal for this is to be able to see our thoughts are just thoughts. They are not us. They might not even be reality. But simply recognizing our thoughts can free us from that distorted reality that they often create. You know, as I just did in the example with the garage, I went from, did I shut my garage door to, oh my God, my house is being robbed. Do you see how distorted those thoughts were? How what a rabbit hole I went down with them? And that was just within a, less than a minute. And our, thought, our minds do this. But when we can get clarity about them, when we can see a thought is just a thought, we can develop a greater sense of managing our thoughts and being more at peace in our lives. So we're going to do a practice here of... Um, breathing for about five minutes or so and just noticing our thoughts now again it's not about pushing them away it's just noticing them and allow them to drift on by you know um in our um movement here we have in our philosophy we have this uh, saying that that which we resist persist and so when we try to push away those thoughts they just get bigger they take on a life of their own and so it's again it's not about judging it or saying, oh my God, here I go again. My mind can't be quiet. Here I am. I'm just off on a tangent. You know, it's about, okay, look, there's a thought. Watch it drift away. There's another thought. Watch it drift away. Now, there are some things that can help us to, um, to keep on track besides just our breathing. Because sometimes what I have found is that the thoughts become such a power within, within me that I forget that I'm even supposed to be focusing on my breathing. And so what I often use is a chime to help me um, refocus. So I'm going to play a chime. Let me go ahead and play it for you right now so you can hear what it sounds like. Well, come on. There we go. <laughs> so I play the chime. And what that does is that brings my awareness back to 
the present moment because those thoughts have taken me out into the future or the past. I am no longer in the present moment when I am down the rabbit hole of the, of the thought. And when I hear that chime, then that gives me the signal, oh, am I still focusing on my breathing? If I'm focusing on my breathing, great, just continue. If my mind has gone off, I now have an opportunity to refocus it. And I will just do this periodically as we're doing this meditation, just every once in a while, touch this and use that chime as a way to bring your attention back to your breath. So I invite you to get comfortable in your chair, whatever way that works for you. And if it works for you to lay down, that's absolutely fine too. You know, everybody's uh, different. Every, there are different ways that work for other people. Uh, we're gonna. One of the things we're gonna do um, later on this month is walking meditations and how mindfulness, mindful walking, can be such a powerful practice. And so, uh, you know, does there's no right or wrong way of doing this. Like I said, I like to sit in a chair and be straight up and down so that I can. I'm not slouched over and I'm not. Uh, impeding my breath in any way. Um, it helps for me to close my eyes. It's not necessary, but for me, it keeps my focus inward instead of being distracted by any visual things around me. And so, um, so I close my eyes. And I just bring my awareness to my breath, breathing in, breathing out. might even notice the breath following the path of it as it comes in through your nostrils, moves into your head, down the back of your throat, into your lungs. You can feel your lungs expanding and contracting with each in-breath and out-breath. Just keep your awareness on your breath. Now, I'm not going to talk much during this, but I will play the chime to refocus you. So let's begin.
Right, so just taking a nice deep breath, let it out. Feel the chair beneath you. Notice the floor, if your feet are resting on it. Maybe the movement of the air in the room. And just gently begin to move. Wiggle your hands and fingers and toes. And when you're ready, just go ahead and open your eyes. Practicing mindfulness can be done for any period of time. I find um, it's really helpful when I'm like waiting for something to just become mindful. Today I was waiting at the car dealership to get my car serviced and just took a few moments every once in a while and just closed my eyes, focused on my breathing. Developing a little bit more mindfulness every moment of every day. You can do it at any place, any time, any way. There's nothing wrong or right about it. It's what works for us. And so I hope throughout this month you uh, continue to join us as we explore some different ways of engaging in mindfulness. As I said, we're going to look at mindfulness for um, dealing with stress and pain and irritation and aggravation from other people and uh, how we can use mindfulness to bring a little more compassion and awareness into our lives. So take an opportunity whenever you can to practice a little mindfulness. Have a great week and we will see you back here next Wednesday. Good night everyone. Here at Center for Spirits Living Greater Las Vegas, we are a mission and vision driven community. We offer transformative educational opportunities, deep and meaningful moments of connection, uplifting Wednesday and Sunday services. We greatly appreciate your contributions that support the amazing work we're doing here in Southern Nevada. We have several easy ways you can contribute. We have text to give. Simply text the amount of your donation to our text to give number and you'll be prompted to enter your information. There's a link to our online donation page posted below this video where you can contribute by debit or credit card. And of course, you're always welcome to send a check to our office if that works better for you. All of your contributions go to support the great work that we're doing here in Greater Las Vegas community. monthly publication, Science of Mind magazine, is a treasure to be read and contemplated. Along with in-depth articles, there is a day-to-day -day spiritual support to be gleaned from its daily guides. Licensed practitioner Lynn Frankenberger hosts Adventures in Faith on Zoom, and you're invited to join in. This is a weekly group discussion that focuses on those daily guides and how to apply them. Check Facebook and our weekly newsletter for more details. Keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real with Reverend Laura. Keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real with Reverend Laura. CSL Greater Las Vegas brings you much of your favorite spiritual music every Friday at 7 p.m. with spiritual soundscapes. Enjoy performances from CSL GLV vocalists along with special guest singers. It's music for your soul. Subscribe to the CSL GLV YouTube channel to get a convenient link sent to you for each musical performance. 
At CSL Greater Las Vegas, it is our mission to inspire spiritual discovery through community connection, exploration, and celebration. This mission supports the all-inclusive vision of Centers for Spiritual Living worldwide in which we envision a world that works for everyone and all of creation. 